Hey there, I'm author Shannon Reber, and this is Genres Bookshop Podcast. And today I am interviewing. <laughs> I'm choking over my words too. Today I am interviewing one of my favorite narrators uh, oh. who has, oh, well, I'm, I'm not kidding here, uh, but uh, has narrated one of my favorite new books that I've read in a while. And uh, we are here to talk about those books and your narrating career. Shannon? Oh, wow. Well, thank you, Shannon. <laughs> it really is a joy to be here. And you have been so patient uh, waiting as I like trudge through other obligations. So thank you for, <laughs> for being so patient and so lovely. No worries. Because I'm excited to be here today. Yay, I'm so glad. Okay, now hold on. Your, your, uh, your narrator name is Shannon Nicole Locke, correct? Yes. Okay. It is. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So we just have to we have to clarify that so that nobody uh, can miss any of your books that you've narrated. <laughs> yes, that's my that's actually the name I uh, was an equity actress under for years. I started off oh. doing stage work and awesome. um, and it's so how everyone in the industry already knew me in okay. the entertainment industry. So I was like, why not continue to use that name? So that's amazing. yeah, it's exciting to have another life, another acting yeah. life. Yeah, that's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. And you are also uh, an, an award-winning actor, award-winning narrator now, correct? I did just win the most lovely award. Yes, thank you. Uh, Sultry Listeners does this. Well, they do a fabulous job overall of just supporting human narration. But every year they have listener um sponsored awards so it's it's all listener nominated listeners are the voters so it really <laughs> means a lot so thank you and and I was in the the new uh the the very the very very beginning narrator at the time that I was nominated it was zero to ten books oh. and now I'm now I'm closer to 15 but it was Ooh, really thank you it was it was a joy and a surprise and just a delight to have people show up and, and vote. So thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Now, how many books have you narrated so far? I think I just wrapped my 15th and then I have, I have five more lined up and a couple of those <laughs> are actually, I know I'm so, I'm just so blessed. A couple of those are series, our cozy oh. mystery series. So that's fun because those are, they're the like casts of thousands, right? But you, <laughs> but but so many of those thousands, like the 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 core of that is a group you get to return to over and over again. So it's kind of like the joy of being in a TV series where it's like, oh, yeah, I'm with my old friends. I can do this is fantastic. And then we're bringing some more folks on. But every book you get more folks. Right. I love so, that. So you dig in deep to like, OK, <laughs> you know, you're listening in subways and on the streets trying. Oh, that's an interesting voice. Maybe I'll incorporate mm -hmm. that in the book. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but exactly. yeah. I've been very, very lucky, and I've had wonderful coaching and mentorship and just guidance to be able to um, to really quickly get some books under my belt, and I, I it's just a joy. I, That's I love amazing. Like most people, like most authors, most nar narrators are readers first, and they right, love exactly. books, right? Exactly, precisely. So, so being able to collaborate with authors and bring that to life and right. be in someone's ear is just <laughs> incredible. I I have always been an audiobook person. Uh, so like uh, the the books that I have always read have been uh, narrated by the the old time people. So they're always these dry sort of droning voices. And now that I've heard some of the fabulous narrators these days, I'm like, how did I listen to that stuff? You know, back in the 80s and 90s when uh, I first started listening to books. Well, it, there's been a real evolution in yeah. what the stand was right, right so right. initially I think there was direction given to these wonderful performers of like you know you're not interpreting you're reading the words and it's evolved right. into the no this is a performance you're giving life to these characters in the book and so Precisely. please make choices please right. <laughs> use the you know the full breadth of your skills exactly it, it's a beautiful evolution and I think yes that change in thinking really is one of the reasons that industry has just exploded in the last 10 years, but definitely the last five, right? The I amount think of you're right, yes. Books, audio books now produced is just legions above what was available exactly. a few yes. years ago. Yeah. I have to say, though, I think the very first, very well-performed audiobook, like 
performed audiobook was uh, Jim Dale for Harry Potter. Oh. His voice was so amazing, and I have not heard, I haven't heard anyone to his standard uh, he, since I finished those books. Oh, he's the gold standard, right? Yes, like, like yes. He is, there's a lot of incredible people out there doing books now, but he really, every once in a while, he, like if, if he was a, if he, he is, I'm sure he does all theater, film, I'm sure he's broadly Probably. working anywhere he wants to work. <laughs> but um, when I was a theater actor, they would just be, you would be in an audition. And if it was one of those um, audition calls where you actually could hear or see the other people, there's some people who are just sparkly, right? Oh. Like they just have, they just have this thing. And, and he has that where there's just like yes. this magic in their voice. Like, the, exactly. they're, you know, he, just this beautiful resonance that kind of like vibrates your soul in a way. Exactly. And he's, he's, he's got that. That's certain what was the French term, je ne sais quoi. Like just, <laughs> exactly. That, like, can't put your finger on it, but when you hear it, you're like, oh, more. Okay. That's it. Oh, yes. I just That's spent 10 I... <laughs> hours. Yes. Right. <laughs> the book just flies by and you're like, wait. <laughs> I was supposed to do my laundry. Right. Oh, no, see, that's the beautiful thing about audiobooks is you can do your laundry while listening to them. True. So... <laughs> I get I get distracted though. Like you, yes, I, you stand there staring into space, going, "Oh, right, right, right." And then you forget even... that you're supposed to be cooking something, and you know exactly. Even holding <laughs> the same shirt to your chest for five minutes, like, "Oh, wait, fold, fold, Oops. tuck, yeah, put it yeah. in the drawer." Yes. <laughs> See, I always fold while sitting on the floor, so I have to fold quickly to keep my cats from laying on the clothes. That's true. <laughs> we, we have that problem in this house, too. It's I don't know how they know, but they know, right? I, I have one. I have one who likes to only sleep on the laundry when my husband is home. If my husband is at work, he has no interest. But as soon as my husband comes home, he's like, woo, laundry, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> it really is. He is precious. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, the the book that we uh, came here to talk about is any anyone by wait uh, Angela Scott. Angela Scott. Yeah. Okay. All right. There we go. I I remember it. I very rarely remember names. <laughs> Me too. I never forget faces. So I just wander around going. She looks familiar. He also looks familiar. I exactly. have no idea how I know them. <laughs> I'm a voice person, so I always recognize someone's voice, and I'm like, hey, you, right. how you doing? <laughs> I know your voice. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm not alone. For sure. You're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Anyone by uh, Angela Scott, and um, th I, I completely fell in love. And I'm guessing you did too, right? I did. I, I, even in the audition piece, like sometimes you just get this feeling. Yeah. And the, uh, the audition piece was the moment where the two main characters meet. Oh. And the moments leading up to that. And okay. I, um, when I first started uh, just having interest in, in, potentially pursuing audiobook narration, right. my my coach had said, Shannon, you sound really young. Like YA is going to be your bread and <laughs> butter, right? Like right today, I actually have a little bit of a cold. So oh. this, is, this is the low end of my the range. The low end I, of the spectrum. I, I, okay. I am, I am a mezzo. I speak usually a little bit more up here. And he's like, YA all the way. You are just going to, that's what is, you're going to book. And I have, I booked a lot of that in middle, middle ages. And and this is it, uh, the 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 female main character is in her late teens. Yes. And um, and the scene where they meet is fun and and <laughs> funny and has action. Yes. And and he and I'm sure we'll get to talking about the male main character in a second. And <laughs> yeah. he, Je, she did this thing that I love when writers do this. So writers, here's my here's the only unsolicited <laughs> advice I'll give you okay. is that. She was very specific about how she envisioned the character. And she okay. was open to interpretation, but she was like kind of a young Matthew McConaughey, kind of that feel, young oh. Woody Harrelson. That's what I'm looking for. Definitely chill, laid back. And when, okay. when she said that, I instantly could picture who that yeah. was in my brain, right? Like I, I, can, I can see that in the way that you narrated him. That is the way, that is the way I heard him. Right, because it's such a 
it's such an archetype. Like yes. you, there's, there's like, you would name maybe two or three other guys who fit into <laughs> that vision. Yeah. And I just got super excited. That was in the audition piece <laughs> as well as uh, information. That's Cole. And yes. then Tess, Tess is the female main character and her write up too was just like me as a teenager. So I'm like, <laughs> Uh, and the sidekick, spoiler alert, this is so, not a yes, spoiler, yes. because I think it's actually <laughs> even in her write-up. I think this, so, yes. The sidekick is a cat. And <laughs> I love, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a there's wonderful post-apocalyptic stuff out there that is uh, that features dogs, and I'm dog-friendly. I love dogs, too. Oh, yes. But I Same thought here. it was so lovely to have a cat, <laughs> because as we all know, cats and dogs not similar very beast. different very very different <laughs> so it brought this lovely additional <laughs> low stakes chaos right to the book, right, right? <laughs> uh, and so i was just all chips in and I, I i will only write an author before i send it an audition piece if i really need a question to clarify something or if i'm super excited in a certain way and i just don't want them like i want them to know the audition's coming because oh. those those auditions yeah there's so many people on acx right so many fantastic narrators right 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 those auditions can get posted and filled within hours sometimes so if i see something that i think will be a good fit and that i am excited about yeah um i will find a reason to oh, I, have a <laughs> I have a question to ask and also by the way can i uh just let you <laughs> can know i that tell I'm... you how amazing i think you are and, uh... right exactly <laughs> Which I have lots of writer friends now that I I feel so blessed to have these lovely writer friends. And I know you're we're all artists, right? And artists right. love to hear when you love their work. Yes. Yes. So I've even sent out notes for things where I'm like, I'm not appropriate for this and I'm booked out, so I'm not gonna send an audition, but I just want you to know like that was a fantastic <laughs> thing, and I'm adding you to my TBR pile, which I'll ne is like most readers, yeah. hundreds of books alone. Exactly, right? exactly. But I'll get there someday. But anyhow, <laughs> maybe possibly. Maybe, I mean, maybe. there are millions of books being published every day. So every day. <laughs> uh, but I, yeah, I was I was instantly uh, just thrilled. Um, she's she's got uh, Angela has this lovely way of writing narration and dialogue where it it just kind of fits the pattern of my thought process so it just ah. I, I like I I I just can like the rhythm of it really spoke to me yes um, and so I got super excited about it because totally. then, then the movie just plays in your mind, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. That's that's the way it works for me. I watch it like a movie in my head. Yes. And I, when when you were reading, even before I knew the Matthew McConaughey thing, that's how I was envisioning him. And I, I was almost it. disappointed when uh, it says later that he has dark hair. I was like, nah, -uh, he's blonde. <laughs> like what? <laughs> oh, crap. Fine. <laughs> You know what's so funny is that I di I didn't remember that. It's almost like I just black I just blanked out that part when yeah, I read it. Like yeah. he's in my head. He's, yes, he's got like sandy brownish hair. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yes. <laughs> but the the angel tattoo on his back that still bothers me, and I want I want desperately to know what that has to do with, oh. especially since he won't tell her what that has to do with, and I need to know, and if I don't get this answer in book three, I will probably cry for a couple of days, maybe oh. maybe a little longer, a couple of years, possibly. <laughs> I need to know. It was, it was so funny. Shannon reached out to me at one point and we were talking about the book and, and I honestly don't know any more than readers mm -hmm. know. And I did admit yep. to, to you <laughs> that that didn't stop me from angling to maybe yes. like acting in some way that I, Hey, author, do I maybe need to know these answers? And I didn't, <laughs> not, not to do my job because it, it didn't change what his motivations were throughout the book. So I didn't need to know these very specific answers. <laughs> to things that as a fan as a as yes. a, a reader who also loved the book like I I wanted to know mm -hmm. um so yeah. yeah there's there's a couple or there's a lot you know you, uh, there and, is and, there are no answers in book two that still ticks me off a little bit like <laughs> I was dying to know what was going on and I had more questions at the end of book two than I had at the end of book one 
I know. I read it. So, I read it so fast too. Yeah. I, I generally read a couple times. Um, and right, during yeah. prep, anyhow, as you might mm-hmm. imagine. Of course. But the the first time, I do try to to not speed, and I just ripped through that book because I <laughs> wanted. I was like, I just let me find out where the answers are to the things that are. Oh, okay. And 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 you know, he appears a little later in the second book than exactly. he does in the first book too. Oh. Um, so, and he is such a lovely foil that um, <laughs> that you just want him on every page. But I mean, it, it's a beautifully told story really in is. both books so it, yes. it it totally works but it's that it's that thing too when you find out like your favorite actors in a movie and then it's mm-hmm. 20 minutes and then it in takes and a while like, to get it yeah it's, it's coming about... right yeah. Come on, what? <laughs> and he he is a fan favorite um oh. she had as you might imagine she actually has <laughs> written um quite a lot of books uh and oh, a lot of I... she's yeah, she's written like a whole zombie series, and really? um, I'm actually working on another book for her now that's about a teenage zombie, and I'm in love with that book too. It's, <laughs> it's amazing. That sounds uh, fun. Wait, the, fun. the zombie, the zombie is the main character. Yeah. No, that's fun. That is so yeah, yeah. fun. Yeah, I am looking forward to hearing that. It's it's cute because her her stepsister and her don't get along, and the stepsister isn't a zombie, so there's some tension, <laughs> tension as you might imagine. And there is against you know always with teenage siblings anyhow, but add in like you're a zombie and your sister isn't. <laughs> it's like a whole Marsha Jane Brady it, thing elevated, yeah, I right? Think you're right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, oh, did I say Jane Brady? Jan Brady. Oh, it, my I know gosh, you my brain, my brain. I needed to fully caffeinate before this, but um, but yeah, it it. He is a fan favorite. So it was one of the things she mentioned even before I started recording. It's like, oh, I already loved him. Now I want (laughs) to, I mean, you always want to make sure you're doing right by your readers. But when you know you have something that's beloved, um, because this book has been out for a while before she went back and did the audio book. So, you know, over the years, there have been people who've been waiting for this (laughs) to exist in this version, right? I'm like, okay, I really want to get this right and you, and you're not gonna do the thing that everyone loves but you just want to make sure you serve who the essence of the character is right exactly right? exactly uh, especially when they're so well written like it's all there on the page who these, you're, who these you are people right. are yes. right yes exactly uh well um Okay, so uh, since you and I have talked about this before, and it is very important for me, for me especially, to talk (laughs) about my theories, I need to give anyone out there who hasn't read Anyone by Angela Scott, Anyone by Angela Scott, uh, you have to either stop listening now or just be prepared for our theories because I have a theory I have to share. Shannon knows my theory, (laughs) but I need to share it with others. So if you haven't read the book, either go read it and then watch us later. Or um, if you have, then please participate. (laughs) Oh, yes. And for those who haven't read it before, so just to give you one last, like, Mm -hmm. for those who haven't read it and are interested in reading it, it does, the the setup for the story is that something has happened. Something is unfolding in this town. And uh, this teenage gal gets rushed to this underground bunker by her father. And and he because he wants to protect her and she thinks he's coming down with her. And at the last moment, he's like, "Okay, you're down there. I'm going to go look for your brother. I'll be right back. Which, as we all know, in any movie (laughs) or book, that's That's probably not going to happen. (laughs) So, you know, eventually when he doesn't come back, she has to make the decision to leave the bunker and try and find them. And that the story unfolds is her journey to try and find her family and, and figure out what this apocalypse is absolutely because yes. it's very mist it's very weird what is it going is. down there's an absence of of anything you might expect would still be out in a world after some kind of event exactly. it's very eerie yes. um and so the book unfolds so now exactly. now 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 we can spoil it but for <laughs> anyone who didn't who didn't know i thought maybe we'd give a little That's a, that is a very good summary. idea very good point <laughs> Okay, so my theory, and uh, you you did say that you you liked my theory, mm-hmm. but my theory is that uh, Cole and Tess, um, they the the question that we had at the beginning of book one is is Cole supernatural? I right. thought he was, and uh, you know, you you didn't exactly say if you thought he was or not. 
In the first book, I really, I, I had a couple competing theories, and that was one of them. Like, yeah. is he supernatural? And the other ones, right. I almost wondered if he knew what was going on and was somehow how an eight, you know, somehow involved in the government in some way. Oh. Because he alludes to yeah. being unhappy with his past. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So my theory for uh, book two, after I heard that, is that uh, basically... I think there is a supernatural uh, entity involved, but it's just uh, basically pulling them around. I, I would I would say something else, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say wordy dirds. <laughs> Word dirds. <laughs> but um, just basically um, pushing them around on a on a chessboard kind of thing, just to mess with them. And I like. I like that theory, but I'm not sure that I'm right. What do you think? Do you think there is something supernatural going on, or do you think it's government-made and uh, whatever? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I get ideas like that. Like that is a, a fine idea, right? And <laughs> you can find evidence in the yeah. book yeah. that would back that up. If you had yeah. to plead this case in front of a judge, you could make <laughs> a really good case for that, right? Right. You you could also make a case for him truly being a supernatural being, you right? Definitely There's can. moments yes. where she's basically dying of frostbite and he's yeah. warm and has no problems. Exactly. And then the next, because we're, because we're just spoiling away here, folks. Yeah, this exactly. The, <laughs> but, you know, Sorry. like he, she looks like she should have limbs amputated and then wakes up after he's like, let me hold your hands and <laughs> is healed, right? Exactly. Like, she, um, I thought I shared this with you. There's this moment and I didn't even catch it until I went back and was doing some editing where uh, that huge fire happens, right? Like mm -hmm. that massive fire yes. that just sweeps through everything. And if you mm -hmm. go back a few chapters, she gets so ticked off on that mountain where she's like, I just wish I could burn it all to the ground. Mm -hmm. And exactly. That you know, and then like a chapter later, this fire starts, right? So and is the that... fact the fact that the people that she's with actually are calling her a witch? Yes, that that was that was a pretty good clue that there That's... might be something weird about her, right? And then and then it made me think like, is the mom out of the story just arbitrary? Because you this is an intimate <laughs> cast. There's not a lot yes. of characters, right? Yes, yes, yes. And it works well having an intimate cast. So is that just the is was that a, a mechanism to then have a single father who then went a little bonkers and then built this bunker built like a was bomb that, shelter. Right. Or <laughs> Or was it because the mom was involved in all of this stuff in some way? You know? I, that... Yes. I did I did wonder that too, yes. I, so it's oh. so funny because any anytime you say a new theory, I'm like, it could totally it could be work. that. And then I'll start <laughs> thinking about it. Or, you know, I uh -huh. feel like if you I'm a huge fan of of older movies and I love the movie Clue. You know, it, oh, it, and, okay. and at the end of the movie Clue, it's like, well, it, <laughs> Here's option A, but it also could have been do, 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 do. option B, right? And in each case, you're like, oh, looking back, that's that that would fit the story. Yeah. And really, any one of these fan theories, like, they could work. They could and, all, yes, all of them could. And they're super <laughs> intriguing, but I, especially him, like, I'm with you. Like, yes. I want to know just because you do, you I'm feel dying to know. Yes. so much for those two characters. I love them. Like, yes. I love Tess and Callie yes. and, and Cole, and I will <laughs> carry them in my heart forever. And I so yes. want them to have their happy ending. And I realize. Don't forget Bob. Gonna... Don't forget and, Bob. And Bob. And I Bob. love Bob. <laughs> I love Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime something comes up in our house and my I have little ones and they're like, what should we name it? I'm like, Bob. We should Bob. name it Bob. <laughs> um, but I, I, my husband I, always says Kenny. So, Kenny? I mean, now it's got to be Bob. <laughs> Bob. Kenny's great too, though. <laughs> but Tess, like we, we know Tess. We know right. all right. her corners and I don't and even edges. like her. I don't even <laughs> like her that much. I know. But I love her because she's part of the story and it's in her head, but I don't like her. 
That was one of the things that <laughs> Angela talked about at one point. She said, um, and if she ever listens to this podcast, and she might, she might. Um, I know she wouldn't mind. I know I just how much I've engaged with her. I know yeah. she wouldn't mind me sharing the few okay. things that I have shared. And that was like, is when she, I have character sheets that I send writers that okay. one of my coaches gave to me, which are fantastic. We're just like tons of questions about how the author pictures the the character and I have point, 45 audiobooks and no narrator has sent me a sheet and now I feel cheated <laughs> uh, well everyone has a different process and to tell yeah. you the truth I don't know if I would have thought to do this if I didn't have this coach oh. who was fantastic who was like I took a big course from him and he said I will share with you this thing you know of course don't send this out to everyone but since you are my student you can if this you want to use this with your authors you can okay. and one of the questions certainly it just talks about I think musicality like if how you picture if you were picturing the um or hearing the voices of musical instrument what musical instrument would it be and I think it's oh. safe to me to share one of 40 questions I love <laughs> that question because it's so it's so interesting because sometimes authors will give you just the musical part of it and sometimes they'll go even you know further where they're like well piccolo because she's so delicate and she kind of it's kind of a light airy thing so it's really cool to see what it triggers that is interesting authors, right yeah yeah really and I think it was that question that I for, I even forget at this point what instrument uh, Angela had said okay. for Tess. But she's like, well, you know, sometimes sometimes I mean, her voice is a little irritating. <laughs> <laughs> I love that she knows that. I love right. that she's not the right. blind parent. Oh, my well, baby she... is beautiful and perfect. No, no, she and that's <laughs> that's what I love. It's my fa it's my favorite thing when authors and so many of you do this. That's why you're writing is when you celebrate <laughs> all of the pieces of a person. Like I don't want to. Exactly. Who wants to just read perfect person who's perfectly <sighs> eloquent and like you'd be bored out of your mind, right? Like exactly. It's why everyone still loves Darcy. Like you know, <laughs> in, 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 in Darcy and Elizabeth. Like for half the book, you're like, what is up this you know like so anyhow I love that she in many ways is such a teenager right yes, where it's yes, right you exactly. love you love her you do you love this person but you're yes. also like can I hit you upside the head <laughs> exactly I mean I know uh, I know you're you're going through some stuff so I get yeah, it exactly exactly it makes but sense calm down like you just <laughs> Chill out, Tess. It's the, not the thing. The thing that always amuses me and makes me think that people are like uh, obnoxiously immature is when they're accusing someone else of being immature. Yes, it drives me crazy. But she thinks everyone's immature. <laughs> exactly. It it absolutely drives me nuts. So I I I was so annoyed when she was doing that. Like. Look in the okay. mirror, Tess. Look in the mirror. <laughs> but I think there's a beautiful, a oh, there's a, you know, she does go through some pretty yes. intense oh, yes. scenes. And I think there's some lovely self realization. I think so, yeah. Afterwards, right? Yes. Like, yes, and, yes. And, and, and that I think is really lovely because, yeah. Especially when you're beginning an actor, they sometimes talk about bridges between emotions, you know, that the right. scene starts here and you need to get here. But right. sometimes your character isn't crossing a bridge. Sometimes they're <laughs> leaping off of it, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and she has a couple moments where crap goes down and she just leaps over and right. just like the, the whole, uh, you know, like it's like fairly close to the beginning of the second book <laughs> where her her team that she's with the, the the crazy survivalist team who decided to head out you know it's it's one of those things that as a reader it's like watching a horror movie you're like <laughs> exactly okay oh, so this knew is that where was gonna you, happen right oh. you're, you're split. <laughs> but it's always the margaret atwood has this great essay that i i i love and i can't remember the title of it and if i do i will i will send it your okay. way but she's okay. talking about how stories are just a what and a what and a what Okay. But it's the how and why 
that really make them exciting. That right? is a very, yes, that is a very good point. You know, because she's like at the end, she gives you like a whole bunch of scenarios. And at the end, like a whole bunch of scenarios with John and Mary. John and Mary <laughs> do this and this and this and this. And then John and Mary die, you know. And at the end of the <laughs> essay, it's just like John and Mary that die. That better not John be the Mary way that die. this book ends. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Tess and Cole are not allowed to die. And neither right? is Bob. Neither is Bob and Callie. I agree. I agree. But it really is like, you, you know, what's interesting is that everything that happens before, mm -hmm. everything that happened to John and Mary that influenced their life, yes. that's the stuff that's, and even if they, you know, even if John was a lawyer and so was Mary, their journey to get to become a lawyer was definitely mm -hmm. not the same. Exactly. So, um, I love it, that. Because there's a, there's a million dis YA dystopian pos po uh, blah, blah, I can't talk today. <laughs> I know what you meant. <laughs> Post-apocalyptic stuff that's out there. Exactly. And, you know, the framework for a lot of them is similar because you're telling a similar story. How right. are people getting through this awful thing that happened? And exactly. And doing it day by day. Yes. And the hows are so exciting because they're all different, right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, and yeah, yeah. With she, zombie apocalypse books, it's never the zombies that are the villains. It's always the people who are the villains. And that gets so old to me. So I, I found it really like refreshing that, you know, one, there's no zombies. Right. <laughs> um, but I, I liked the fact that there, there wasn't, um, you know, the uh, group of horrible, horrible people that are trying to take over the world. And you, I, I'm tired of that. Uh, that way of thinking, I guess. Yeah, so it's, I was it's really refreshing. refreshing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because there's an intimacy to that group where it is, it is about her surviving, but yes. it really is just about all the discoveries she's making while doing it. Exactly. And the stakes are still really high. And then very, there's very, just yes. in the underneath, there's just always simmering this like, what mm -hmm. is going on? Exactly. So it's like watching a movie that was filmed someplace that you used to live and you can't remember <laughs> where right so you're just like uh, yes yes something familiar but also eerie and I'm just not mm. certain and it keeps you just like a little bit off balance like just, just a little bit yes a little bit to the side <laughs> um precisely and, and, you know and just things that happen like magical deer the magical deer I love the magical deer the, <laughs> but it ticks me off that the magical deer didn't get a name come on Tess <sighs> Why does the magical deer have to be called the magical deer? <laughs> she didn't even get around to naming Bob. You know? Oh, I know. <laughs> but I think there is this fear, like, I think underneath that is this yes. fear of loss. Yes, right? exactly. Like she doesn't That's even what ask... I, I did get that. Yeah, she doesn't even ask Cole his name, right? Yes, like, eventually correct. he's like, so usually when someone does something nice for me... <laughs> I tend to like to know how to thank them and I tend yeah. to ask them their name. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> right. What's your name? <laughs> My name is Tess. Screw you. Right. <laughs> there, uh, but she does build in these great moments. Like yes. in the first book, um, the, the moment with the hospital. Oh, where yes. You, oh. And I, I just... It is that thing, and we've all had that moment in our yeah. life where something horrible has happened, exactly. and that's like your brain doesn't want to tell you it's happened because right. you so don't want it to really be real. Exactly. And yes. this, she so captures that absolute delay of like, nope, I got to be able to save someone, right? Exactly. So she's just yes. digging in that pile while he's like, uh, can we? <laughs> Let's sit. We need to go now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why don't you come over here, right? And she's just like, no, I'm going to save them. Uh, uh, that did and, that. There are scenes where I actually do like her, and that is one of the scenes where I do. Yeah. So yeah, you see this spark of like, okay, with a little bit of maturity, she's gonna yes. get there, right? Yes. There's, yes. Exactly. My, my husband and I were just talking about that because our kids are are almost teens, and oh, they boy. are they are dealing with you just figuring out how to socially navigate the world. And right. that was the conversation we had is that some people they know have made some not so great choices. And some of those kids are going to wake up to be adults someday that kind of look back and lament right. those choices. Right? right. And realize exactly. that was a moment I've grown beyond. And some yeah. of them aren't, some and, of them but you, yeah. some of them won't, but you <laughs> get the sense, or at least I do get the yes. sense with Tess that she is going to be 
she is going to be a good person to be around. Exactly. Once she gets out of her own way. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> she's got to get out of her own way. But she really does. Yes. She's going to get there. But it's this yeah. thing that um, Joel Frumkin is 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 one of my coaches and he's, I okay. love him and he's amazing. And if anyone, he does a lot of um, uh, male, male romance books. And okay. if any of your readers are into those, he's like, he's right. He's won every award under the sun. He's amazing. Oh, I'm not, okay. I okay. am not alone in like, going like <laughs> he is amazing. <laughs> but one of the first things he said to me, the first time I coached with him, I was doing this voice and he stopped me and he's like, Shannon, why don't you like this character? <laughs> <laughs> I stopped for a second and I thought, that's coming across. I don't. Like, it's <laughs> coming across on my voice. He's like, you, your job as the narrator is to fall in love with oh. each one of these characters. Like, okay. there is something likable in each one of these characters. And for these characters, I didn't have to dig. Like I said, I was <laughs> I was totally test yes, when I was a yes. Yes, and so yes, yes. I totally get that. And I, I probably play her with a lot more <laughs> affection than a lot yeah. of other narrators were just because I so identify yes. with her. I had that older brother who would have done exactly the same thing. <laughs> he was never where he was supposed to be. Mm, My dad would course. have had to gone off to look for him. And I would have been pissed that now I'm spending, you know, an apocalypse alone because my brother <laughs> didn't go play pool when he said he was going to play pool or whatever. Um but anyhow, I, that thing really stuck with me is that you you do, you have to, if you are like, and I've heard if you, I've heard other actors say that before who are playing villain, like villains. Oh yeah. Villains don't think they're villains. Villains are the, exactly. the heroes in their own stories. Right. 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 Exactly. So that's how you, that's what you bring to the table when you play them. Um, but yeah, the end, I was so, I was so <laughs> excited of the, the mm -hmm. end of the second book. Mm -hmm. Same, to, same, same. To have that scene. To have but then that, scene to, finally at that cliffhanger <laughs> it made me crazy i i was i was screaming at my phone okay so the ending of the book it it drove me crazy but in the best possible way <laughs> in a murderous kind of way but still the best possible kind of way I am a big fan and I have to know what's happening and the that cliffhanger is killer it is it is and she you know she had said it there were there were going to be three books and i don't have any clue if she actually is working on that third book or not and i wish i could say i had insider information because it leaves you right at that like well there's nowhere for him to go right yes. like he's going to be found out if he is somehow you know one of the theories not really there <laughs> right because exactly. there's all that weirdness in the exactly. first book about and even in the about, second no, book it, about the other guy seeing him yes even right in, and even in the second book when they're looking at the tapes he's not in he's any not, of those exactly. tapes right exactly um that you're like oh gosh it's, i mean i will cry if he's <laughs> not an actual real I, person i really think i might too actually right? there, there might be a tiny bit of hate mail involved if he's not but only in the best possible way i swear just because you care so much I right do, i do i love that i i i have <laughs> such a similar reason i haven't had a response that strong since i read this book called the crimson petal and the white and they killed off one of my favorite characters oh. and it happened right it, it was a it was a physical book as a huge yeah. book I was reading I was living with my best friend this is like a decade ago and she made the fatal mistake of entering in the house right when I I like went back you know like and I do it in audiobooks like rewind like surely that's not what just happened so I went back and I'm like oh my gosh no he's dead what? I threw the book <laughs> and I hit her like I clobbered oh, no, her did? I did I clobbered her luckily in the legs because I'm a horrible throw okay well that's um, good that's lucky for her <laughs> she was like what happened like I was like they, the character oh, they killed him and that's exactly how I would feel if he was not real because that's I think she handles I love romance it's a genre I like to do as well okay. I do it okay. under a different um pseudonym so my oh, kids don't die of mm -hmm. embarrassment yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the worst kept secret though it's Sadie Provost if anyone's interested oh my goodness <laughs> and at, at, and I did it just enough so there was just enough like of a line that if any of her, their little tween friends went looking not that they're going to but just if anyone <laughs> looking I also thought it would be weird like 
and every narrator has to do their own thing. But it would just right. be weird to me to see like a middle grade book next to a, a yeah, super that steamy might be book kind of a... <laughs> in my in my queue on Audible. That might so... be a little odd, yeah. So that's my <laughs> my separation. Um, but I I love romance, and I yeah. love. I when especially when I love two characters. Yes. I love when I'm yes. reading a non-romance book and there's those moments of romance, right? Exactly. Exactly. The so wonderful like that that whole scene and this is no slight to romance novelists because they do beautiful <laughs> beautiful work, but that whole scene where he's trying to lift her spirits with the roller skating mm -hmm. and the balloons mm -hmm. and his whole speech and her realization of like oh you you <laughs> like me is it was so, handled with such grace and humor and dexterity I exactly I just thought that and just even his response to all this like I just <laughs> yeah. because because these books are also um were written about 10 years ago so oh so i didn't realize it was that long yeah i think they were written oh. about 10 years ago so there isn't the super sensitivity to that line at 18 but she's so right. close to it oh, right yeah and, exactly and he's he's like only a few years older than her or or a million years old we don't Maybe. know but we have no but, idea <laughs> but we assume just we a couple assume. years older than her and like they say in there like it is like there's no one left in the world like exactly is, are people really concerned about that nuance when they're like each the only person for each other right that is a trigger for me usually i i had an experience as a teenager with an older dude who you oh, know I'm he so sorry he he spent his time blaming me for everything that had happened when and when cole was kind of doing that I was ready to strangle him and maybe not punch him but um <laughs> oh I'm so sorry um, I, I in having that experience I didn't hate this book and I normally would so that that's actually a pretty good sign of how well it's handled and how well it how well it's written that no, that, that me in it, with my past I I wasn't I wasn't upset about it at all Shannon, that is a beautiful compliment because I think that's always, I imagine you're the writer, so you yeah. can speak to this, but I would imagine that's one of the goals as a writer is to yes. be able to tell a story with nuance and grace right. exactly. that is, that is going to be able to reach many people and, and that they're able to enjoy the story, even if there are moments that right. exactly. I, they identify with in a way that is sensitive right exactly exactly so that's a that's a beautiful compliment yeah I think she's a very sensitive oh, okay. writer yeah so I, she's I, I not really, like Tess you're saying she's not like <laughs> Tess maybe she was as a teen maybe, and she's maybe. also you know she's also grown but oh. yeah she I, I I thought she handled yeah I mean I just every I I, I love the book <laughs> I, I love the too. books I, I do too say. I love them both I love them both but I Herpy. need book three I know I know right <laughs> yeah I I need it too and I I love it's something I didn't notice until I was editing too is that almost all those chapters are similar in length oh really and they're there's they're very there's a couple that are a little short and there's okay. a couple that are a little long but especially in the first book they okay. all follow a similar structure and have like oh. a similar rhythm to them and I just thought that was interesting as an audio narrator that. I noticed so much more of the mechanics of oh. books than I think I would have noticed as just a reader okay because you not only live the book when right. you're telling exactly. it but exactly. then with a lot of the self-published stuff because they're royalty share so as a narrator right. I'm just getting a piece of the pie or royalty right. share where they give me a little bit of money towards the editing and everything the royalty right. share plus I'm doing the editing and the mastering right right when you do um and this is just for anyone who doesn't know the mechanics of audiobooks but if you are doing a per finished hour and you're getting a flat rate usually that's an elevated rate so you can send that to somebody else who does the editing and the mastering right. for you and when you do that, you don't live with the book and post as much, right? Right. But with these anyone books, I was doing it all and I and it's so and with my other royalty share projects, it's so fascinating because you do I notice mechanics more okay. because I'm in it in a mechanical way as well okay. as a creative oh. way. 
So it was really cool. Yeah, like I think that first book, it's like almost like 12 to 15 minutes, 12 to 15 minutes, like each oh, chapter or something I like that. I never noticed. And, and they all have like, you know, just like this mini, she's good at taglines, I think. I think she's really <laughs> good at like buttons. That's what it is. Like buttons oh, for scenes. Okay. Right? Yeah. That, like, yes. Yes. Yeah, that and makes sometimes, perfect sense. Yes. Sometimes they're punchlines. Like Cole has a couple <laughs> really great ends and I wish I could remember them. I am one of those, like I get done with a project and it's like the little guy that was in charge of writing everything down takes the file and just throws it out the window. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't remember a lot of details. I remember more like the feel or how I felt when right. doing something. Exactly. But I just remember really just being amused that there's, you know, a couple times where he just had some real singers at end of chapters. And I'm trying uh, to remember if that'll do pig uh was uh <laughs> I think that's the one was I was it was an end was that an end one? <laughs> I think I think it was. I think it was. I think it I want to say that it was. I have to tell you, I I have been very lucky to really do uh, like uh, because I am hoping to do this full time, but I'm currently still doing it part time okay. and trying to build a library of works. I'm very oh. selective about what I take on. So I right. just take I take on stuff that I really love. Right. OK. And right. I'm ve I'm very lucky right now to be privileged to be able to just do that. Right. And um, uh, so I those 15 books that I've now done, I, I love each one of them. <laughs> and I have to say, though, that scene is probably <laughs> my favorite scene because it is one of my a... favorites that I've maybe ever heard I mean he's beautiful a... scene absolutely beautiful and he ends it with that'll do pig like <laughs> he's just a butthead like he's just... <laughs> exactly. it's okay to say that but you're just like and we all have, we exactly. all have dated that person or known that person that is just like yes there's a tender moment and I can't let that can't happen. let this can't <laughs> let this be that'll do pig and cole <laughs> is totally the king of that right <laughs> yes just like any yes indeed and, and that's the beautiful dynamic shift i yes. think that happens in the second book because there's moments where he's been the one that's like yucka 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 da, 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 da. <laughs> and then all of a sudden in the second book like he's trying to be serious and she's like hey she's am i right ball. am i right yeah <laughs> so i loved that that flip Right. I did. Because, I did too. Yes. Because that's humans. Like we all have exactly. that multiplicity in us. So it exactly. was it was lovely to see that agreed. on the page. Absolutely agreed. <laughs> so well, uh, so so tell me, like that that was a comic moment that really lived with both of us. Was there exactly was there another moment that just spoke to you? It didn't even have to be like in a comic way, but was there another moment that just really kind of sat with you and and resonated? Uh it was in book two when um Shoot, now I can't remember his name. The uh, the chubby teenager uh, oh, was showing Tess uh, the scene in the uh, in the video room. Yeah, showing her him? how she showed up at their bunker. That one still kind of lives with me. Like I I will see it in my head, and like it gives me chills. And oh, I God. love that. There was there was nothing. I mean, it was just. It was just a really great scene to play through your head, like kind of on a on a loop, and I keep seeing it on a loop. She's very cinematic, I think. It, yes, right. You could see that there's a couple of 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 books that I have. They all play like movies in my mind, but there's yes. some that are just like the cinematography is really good, and I feel that, like her cinematography is really good because she takes you. Sometimes you like can even feel the camera push. Like sometimes <laughs> it's like, oh, it's super intimate. Oh, now she's going big. Now, now she's, she's going about. Now yeah. she's going right? <laughs> widescreen. <laughs> you can feel it, and I loved that moment. I I loved the, um, I loved the moment of, of. Of seeing the deer later on too, when she yes, the exactly. Deer. I thought that was so. That get, I just got goosebumps beautiful. right now, just uh, just remembering that. It's just you. When when authors can can just take you into a scene and take you just into the mind and the heart of the character as they're yes. experiencing something where they obviously I'm getting goosebumps too because she does such a great job no. when it, it's just so. 
you it's just awe inspiring mm -hmm. uh really you guys and i i I know I said oh, it's such magic that you make, and I said that to an author friend once, and she was like, "It is toil and hard work." And so, I, exactly, I totally understand that too. But I, I think the magic is is that you don't see it, you don't see the hard work on the page. You just, you just live the life. You know, like that's the beauty that you guys, that is, yes, yes, bring yes. is that I don't, I. The only reason I even noticed the mechanics is because I was editing stuff, right? <laughs> Going, oh, I noticed that oh. she's got a rhythm here. But other than when I am just reading that book mm -hmm. or reading a good book, you're just lost in this beautiful world. I have no idea that you were like walking the dog every, you know, night at 2 a.m. for weeks <laughs> going, that's not how chapter 12 needs to that's end. Not, I don't yeah, know how no. to end it. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, I have cats. So basically, I, I wake up with a cat on my pelvic bone. I'm going, that's not how that's supposed to end. Also, move, please. <laughs> <laughs> I got to roll over. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's, yes, we have we yes we have we have too many cats. We have several cats, and we and, have three. It's my husband's fault. Oh, uh, we have twice as many, and we oh, didn't, you do. We have we we luckily have a house that can manage that. We did not okay, mean to have that money. It was a series of having like I am I am such a softy, and yes, we would lose a cat, and my kids would be devastated, and oh. then we would go to go to like let's go to the shelter and then get another cat. And then they'd fall in love with a bonded parent. And I would have to say, <laughs> okay. So okay. any time that we had a cat pass away, we replaced it with two. So with all two. of a yes, sudden we looked sense. around and we're like, how do we have six? How do we have six cats? What? <laughs> so yeah, but there's just, there's just two who want to be that cat who are like on us. Cause they each yeah. have their, their person. Right. But we exactly. have, we have the ones where I'm like, I'm afraid if I turn too fast in the middle of the night, it's going to be like projectile kitty. Like, <laughs> exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or I, I have to get up in the middle of the night and I have to like move all three bodies because, you know, my blood sugar is low and right. I have to go and get some milk. I'm like, guys, guys, move. Guys, do you hear the beeping yeah. coming out of my phone? That means move. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's so obvious to me too that Angela has cats. Has cats, cats, yes, yes. But especially the has cats thing. Like that first scene, the uh, the the this this, oh, and I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's some scene where she's in the first book where she's in the apartment and the cats just doing cat stuff made me laugh. <laughs> and then and then in the second book, the whole like the 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 cat and the bag and the cat out of the bag like it it just it makes you laugh and she's written in a way and this is my one of my favorite thing authors do too where she's written in a way that if you are a cat person you, you get, get so many layers of that scene and you yes. just laugh yes. your butt off but if you're not a cat person you still enjoy you st yes. listening to the or reading the antics <laughs> of this ridiculous animal, right? Exactly. They so are. <laughs> right. Every she... one of them is. But Callie, Callie is way up there in the ridiculousness <laughs> and the it's... cuteness. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> oh, excuse me. It is orange cat energy, though. Like I have never <laughs> had an orange cat, but I currently have a friend, a very close friend, who has a young orange cat. Oh. And it is a it is a male cat, but I, I was... I told her, I'm like, you have to listen to this book because your cat is in this book. And not only did she write your cat, but when I am speaking these lines about this orange cat, I am picturing your cat Precisely. in this book because I can see it. Like he, he has made appearance anytime I've had a Zoom meeting with her, he yeah. is there. He is like knocking That's the screen hilarious. over, you know, he's just like trying to get in the camera. I'm like, that is Kelly 100%. Uh, it so is, yes. Yeah, she's just not going to be ignored. But she, and that's a front foil because right. I love the idea of her as it, it, like you have something that you can break tension with. Right, exactly. I mean, you have Cole. Cole breaks tension, but he's not there all the time. So I love I love having Callie always there. Oh, so amazing, <laughs> right? Exactly. And that's when she when she disappeared, I was distraught. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was super yes. happy that that was very short lived. That was short lived, book, yes. <laughs> because I, I was really having heart palpitations over mm -hmm. like you, you, you took you away Cole and you Callie. No, you can't do that. That's wrong. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm gonna need this to all be okay by the end of this book. <laughs> I I had this narrator um reading um 
uh, it was a shorter book that I had written quite a few years back. And um, it was uh, the kid had, I believe, a Great Dane. It, it's a big dog, really big dog. His name is McLean because John McLean. He was a big fan of Die Hard. I love it. <laughs> um, but uh, there's the scene at the end where uh, the dog gets locked in the house uh, when the kids are being like dragged down the beach. It, oh, it's wow. it's a big it's a big very dramatic very awful scene and um but she she sends me a message and she's like i need you to know i would have stopped reading your book right there and i would never work for you again if you had killed that dog i was like oh, it's okay i didn't i didn't the dog is alive it's okay <laughs> 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 oh, people are serious about that, though. I know yes. I have several. I, I, I'm sure I would have felt the same as well. But I know I have friends who will ask before, like if they open and on page seven, a dog is introduced, they'll close that book and call someone up and be like, oh, have you read this book. Can Do you know? Do I need lives? to be concerned about this dog? Right. <laughs> so sweet. See, the thing that I find amusing is that people get really upset about violence against animals, but they don't care if uh, 10 people are unalived in the book, just so long as the dog lives. Right, It's right, okay. Right. It's all okay. Just so long as the dog's okay. Right, right, right. <laughs> the, do the dog's running through cor corpses and they're just concerned like, oh, are his paws going to get are all his wet? Paws okay? oh. Oh. It's going to get a cold. So true. So true. <laughs> I, I know the entire time in the second book, that whole, I mean, it wasn't all of my brain that was preoccupied with it, but during mm -hmm. that whole scene where she's strapped to a tree and then bounced around and all that, yes. I kept thinking, I'm thinking oh, God, of Kelly. Kelly squished, right? Yes. Like I was so worried about her her brother and her dad, but in there but, was a part we of my brain. thinking about the cat. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Is she gonna make it? <laughs> that was that was uh, super. Intense. that was that was very that was a very intense it's a much more intense book i believe book two is yeah. than book one and i i kind of liked the progression so oh good yeah i i but liked that a lot was um though that one there's a couple chapters where it is just almost sustained tension yes right yes was, it, was were you still able to to hang with it without feeling like physically overwhelmed. I I don't do that. I I okay. will I listen to very very dark books. So <laughs> d darkness and tension it doesn't affect me at all. <laughs> Cuz it is a lot. It's one of the things we talk about as yeah. narrators when you're acting out a book, when you're reading a book, right? It it you can almost step away, but sometimes right. when that voice is in your ear for a full chapter. Yes. Right. It, it exactly. Really, it, it's trying to find level so you 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 can handle it without right. feeling they need to feel they need to feel it's OK if they feel like the characters are in danger. Right. But the reader needs to feel safe with me, if that right. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So that does make sense. Yes. It's, it, when I heard that from a coach, I'm like, oh, that makes so much sense to me. Yeah. I actually hadn't read a lot in the genre. Oh. Before. Uh, um, I read a little bit, but okay. but years back. Okay. Um, and and so revisiting this genre, I you know I started listening again because I was like, I want to make sure I get like tone right, like a tone. Okay. So certain genres have feels to them, right? I and. Oh, Go I'm ahead. sorry. I'm sorry. I keep going. I'll I'll tell you what I will uh, what I was going to tell you in a second. It, so I just I uh, was one of the things he talked about was not only tone but just making sure you're pacing things where people oh. can digest it still. Okay. Okay. And enjoy it. They still yes. gotta enjoy it. They can't can't scare the crap out of them like <laughs> for twelve minutes straight because someone's gonna be like, okay, I gotta put this down and go get a drink and mm -hmm. right, right. But I'm so sorry. Yeah. What what were you gonna well, say about tone? I there was this um zombie apocalypse book that i was listening to and it was read by um luke luke daniels uh who is one of my favorite male narrators and uh i think the woman's name is therese Plummer, okay. i think um but they they did like uh in the sections in the woman's point of view uh she does all the female voices and you know then you hear the um and i thought in her voice and then he does all the male voices and it was a really, I I liked it, um until book two where it kind of got screwed up a little bit, <laughs> but um, the way that uh Therese I think uh did 
did the voices was she would make uh, the the main character's voice sound breathy and disturbed every time something terrible was happening it was it was this really interesting way of you were feeling it with oh, wow. the character and it was like <gasps> oh while while she was uh in the scene and it was so interesting and I really enjoyed that and I have never actually found another narrator who reads like that uh, I guess uh, puts that much of a performance into the into the book it was amazing oh it sounds amazing yeah, yeah. it's it really it is always the balance you're trying to figure out is is um how much breath Right. Yeah. Like how much? And it's so. What's so interesting too about narration, you know, and acting choices is that you loved that choice, and there was somebody else who hated it. Right. right exactly. Right. Exactly. And, and and that's the beauty of narration <laughs> is that you, it, it, you know, kind of talking about like you writing characters, how boring it would be if every character <laughs> was just perfect. And it's the same thing, like right. how boring narration would be if we all were like, this is the way you do it. And, mm -hmm. and make sure if you have this, you cry and only cry mm -hmm. on the third line. <laughs> but it's not, it's, it's, there's such beautiful variation. Exactly. And, and that's super exciting to, to hear that there's somebody out there that's really pouring that much yes in, into and a performance right because that's a bold did choice such an amazing job yes yeah you it know, really and, is and I love bold choices because that's I was very I was lucky enough that I had a friend who um I had unfortunately a lot of loss a couple of years ago and oh. so I it really was you know that's grief is a natural part of life right. but it's hard when yeah. you lose people close to you and I'm a huge Bridgerton fan, so okay. One of my friends actually bought me a Zoom with Jonathan Bailey, who plays Anthony oh. Bridgerton. Oh my gosh! I have to tell you, like I, <laughs> That's I know amazing. Y'all are probably listening and thinking I'm the biggest extrovert in the world, but I'm not. I am not. And so the idea that I would have to like talk to him on mm -hmm. a Zoom was like mm -hmm. giving me heart palpitations. <laughs> so so lovely, and <sighs> uh. And my my one of my gals came on with me, and she actually rickrolled him, which was hilarious, <laughs> on a kazoo because that's my kid. <laughs> but um, that's she hilarious. Was, she was telling him how she had rickrolled her school with this kazoo, and he was like, well, "What was the response?" She said, "A a sea of parents with a catalog of disappointed faces," and that line will live with me because I thought it was a great line. <laughs> that is. And, that's Perfect. And I said, well, you know, the people who got it, got it. And the right. people who didn't, didn't. He's like, but that's what you want. You want all five star or one star reviews. Yes. Medi mediocrity is the death of art, right? Yes. One precisely. stars or five stars. So I love, now I'm going to have to write that down <laughs> that narrator and look for her. I love somebody who's like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. Yeah. Because go for it. Right. Precisely. Right, it was it, it was such an amazing book, and the way that those two performed it, it really just it made the book. Oh, that's incredible! Uh -huh. Okay, I'll well, send you a link for it later. I was going to say, DM me, DM me. <laughs> I will. That. I will. <laughs> but but yeah, to get back to this book, yeah, the second book, it doesn't it doesn't answer a lot of questions. It brings up more questions, and they do yes. kind of they leave you right at that <laughs> moment. So I- A very I, pivotal moment too. It's a very pivotal moment. So <laughs> I'm hopeful, I'm dwelling in hope that um, that we get answers and we get a, at a book three because she's so phenomenally talented. Yes, agreed. She really is. And I'm going to look up the rest of her books. I mean, if, if this one is so good, there's got to be others that are just as good. So I yeah, will be looking hers up. I have to imagine that, yeah, I'm with you, that I, I, I have not read the others except for uh, the book about Zia, the, the teenage zombie, which I'm, which I'm working Zia, on. Zia, that's so cute. I love oh, that. So <laughs> it is, and it is really cute because, uh, because the human beings are the jerks. Um, and, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and it, but it, it, she captures I mean, you can see that in in these books. Like she she understands the teenage mind. I'm guessing right, she, exactly. She, she's got to have a teenager. She's got a teenager. <laughs> she, she's they're in her house. They are in the house. I the think you're coming from inside the house. <laughs> Assuredly. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> 
Okay, so um, is it, we should probably wrap up at least moderately soon. But um, I wanted to mention to you with uh, you narrating my book, I'm starting to wonder if Shannon Nicole Luck should be the person who uh, narrates, or if I should use Ooh. your your sultry voice. It might. If it, it's steamy, it's a grown up. No, it's not steamy, but it's a. It's definitely not a tr- a book for YA. It's Definitely okay. Not. It's okay. I th- I think, and we can talk about like okay. what you're comfortable with. But <laughs> I would be totally comfortable with. Uh, I I have uh, the first book I did, which was a thriller, because of her oh. is is not YA either. Okay. For me, it's just more of if somebody was looking stuff up. Sometimes yeah. the 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 romance novels kind of <laughs> steamier steamier yes, covers. Yes. Yes, so I, precisely. And honestly, I it is it is such a big nothing burger that I. <laughs> but now, now I kind of, like I said, initially I was just like, cause I was I'm not going to tell anyone and that way. My kids aren't embarrassed at all, but yeah. they just don't care. Like I, no, no one's looking for me. Like none of their friends care. They don't care. They, they don't want to hear about it. Kissing is gross. Eh. So it's oh, become just this wait thing. a couple years, a couple years. That will not be the way they think. And then you'll have other worries. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's okay. We're just going to, chill in this spot here you're gonna create a bomb shelter in the back to lock your girls in (laughs) for when they reach that point right (laughs) yeah yeah they would remember the code to get in and I wouldn't and then you'd never see me again (laughs) my kids are way smarter than I am they understand my dot my eldest I put up my working website and she figured out how to get into it. I mean, only you could only see the changes on her side, but she knows how to code. (laughs) But she changed all my answers and reformatted where it was like, I also narrate steamy books. Ew, gross. Uh." You know, it's like written on this website page, right? That is hilarious. So so no, I I like your kid. (laughs) Oh, oh, you, they're, 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 they're funny. They're funny. True Cali energy, the two of them, maybe <laughs> with a dash of coal. Okay. okay. Oh my! Now that is that is serious. <laughs> they're funny. They're, they're, they're funny. but um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, well, um, I I gotta I gotta shut this down, but I need to know, um, because this is my for my bookshop. I need to know what you're reading right now. Oh, what I'm? I just mostly, I really. <laughs> I have to prep so many books, um, and I'm lucky enough to be narrating so many books. I'm booked out That's amazing. for for, for my, I'm it's it's luck. I mean, it is it is hard work, but it's yeah. it's it's luck. Entertainment is luck, right? But thank you, thank <laughs> you. So right now, I'm reading. I'm finishing reading Zia. Okay. Um, when if if I'm trying to think of like the last book. I read that I wasn't narrating. <laughs> oh, um, and if anyone does like romance, I cannot recommend oh. this book enough. Okay. Aaron, La- Aaron Langston is somebody I became friends with through the Bridgerton fandom. Oh, and yeah. she wrote and produced her first book. And it has been a runaway hit. It is called Forever Your Rogue. Oh. And it is um, <laughs> set in the Regency, similar era, uh, era as Bridgerton. Um, and it has a audiobook that is out hmm. and if you are a fan of romance books <laughs> or audiobooks in general mm-hmm. it's her her male and female narrators are both amazing justine air does that mm-hmm. book and okay. will m watt okay or yacht i don't know <laughs> look up that book because okay. that guy's voice is fire but it is this beautiful baritone resonance and he is just he was all chips in on that book it is a beautiful performance it is steamy steamy. (laughs) but if so that's probably the last book i read that wasn't a like in my queue ready to prepare book and it's it's phenomenal it's lovely that sounds awesome (laughs) All right. Well, thank you so much for being on with me. And um, I I look forward to someday working with you once I finally get this book done. I'm out super, there. I'm super <laughs> excited. And I'm excited that it's that it's dark. I love dark. Hey, OK, too. good. Wish you. Uh, and uh, also, don't forget, people, uh, Angela Scott, anyone. And uh, you, you need to listen to it. You need to read it and you need to tell us your theories, too. Right? Oh, yes, absolutely. I want all the theories. (laughs) I need the theories.
It was well, lovely you, to Shannon. chat with you. Oh, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll talk to you when book, th when book three comes out. <laughs> right? <laughs> book at least two hours. I'm sure exactly. it's going to be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you later. Okay. Bye. Bye.